We need to get the heal spell back. I wish this was still in the game. Please, bring it back! I miss you. No! Heal spell. A card born from pure love and embraced like a cherished baby by players everywhere. It brought fun, excitement, and a fresh energy to Clash Royale. But something went wrong. What pushed Supercell to remove this beloved spell? Was it impossible to balance, overpowered, or just too weak to survive? The answer isn't so simple. But today, we're diving into the sad and surprising story of the heal spell. As you probably know, Clash Royale is set in Supercell's Clash universe, which began with Clash of Clans. Many iconic characters from Clash of Clans have made their way into Clash Royale, just with some slight modifications. In Clash of Clans, you raid villages using massive armies of troops, whereas in Clash Royale, you batter your opponents in real time using an eight card deck. The games are fundamentally different, but the core elements have transitioned from one to the other. Characters like barbarians, bombers, skeletons, archers, witch, Night Witch, Queen, Minions, and many others have been adopted from Clash of Clans into Clash Royale. The transition isn't limited to troops. Buildings, and especially spells from Clash of Clans, have also found their way into Clash Royale. Spells like Freeze, Rage, and Lightning, which were all known for their offensive capabilities, have all been integrated into the game. Some things were reworked and changed in order for them to work better in Clash Royale. For example, in Clash of Clans, the bomber targets the walls first, and walls alone. There are no walls in Clash Royale, so he was reworked to throw bombs at every enemy troop and or building instead. The rage spell in Clash of Clans boosts movement speed and the damage of troops, while in Clash Royale, it was reworked to only boost movement speed, therefore dealing more DPS. Uh, you, you get the point. However, there was one spell Supercell was hesitant to include. Not really just a spell, but rather a concept, healing. So the heal spell, which is a very iconic spell in Clash of Clans, was missing from Clash Royale. Not only the spell, but the healer as a troop as well. There was no form of healing carried over to Clash Royale. Players were curious about why the heal spell and the healer weren't included in Clash Royale. Many believe that if implemented correctly, these features could have been highly effective. Players even created and shared their own card ideas for the heal spell and the healer complete with their own stats and descriptions. However, Supercell had valid reasons for not adding them to the game, starting with the healer. So in Clash of Clans, the healer only healed the friendly troops and would remain stationary if there were no friendly troops nearby. This mechanic would not work in Clash Royale, where every troop has its own pathfinding behavior and constantly moves towards the enemy. Given this, the healer would not fit into Clash Royale's dynamic environment without some significant reworking, which is something Supercell considered and will be discussed further later. The situation with the heal spell was different. Supercell was afraid that the heal spell would have been used more defensively rather than offensively, which was understandable. Supercell always wanted to make their games fun, and if players actually only used it for defense, I myself would not have been too happy to play against it. It would have been no fun if the enemy always healed their troops and won interactions they weren't supposed to. But to think that players wouldn't use the heal spell offensively, that's pretty hard to believe. Players did still have hopes for it, but unfortunately just a few months later, after Clash Royale's release, Supercell announced in their ruled out features of Clash Royale that any form of healing card would not be introduced into the game. This decision was pretty disappointing for a lot of players, as the mechanics of such a card seemed too promising to be left unused. However, one of these so-called ruled out features was soon added epic card donations, which made these quote ruled out features not 100% ruled out, and players had their hopes up again. These two heal cards were suggested in almost every new card suggestion posts, and it kind of became a meme in the community. That is until they actually did it. So on March 11th, 2017, Supercell made the announcement of a new wave of cards, soon arriving to Clash Royale, and Heal Spell was one of the four cards. Others were Bats, Bandit, and the Night Witch. This was very shocking to the community, and they were happy a card with such a unique mechanic was gonna be added. The Heal Spell was made available during the Heal Draft Challenge, which started on April 28th of 2017. In this challenge, gameplay was similar to a regular draft challenge, 
except that one of the players was able to choose who would use the heal, just a normal draft challenge. And if the other player achieved at least six wins, they obtained the heal early. Generally, it was released for everyone to unlock, like any other card, on May 1st. At tournament level, which was level 7 at that time, the heal spell healed 176 HP per second for 3 seconds with a 3 tile radius. Uh, more precisely, it healed every half second, 88 HP every tick, and it ticked 7 times. Uh, 7? That's the wrong math, it's supposed to be 6. Well, yeah, it was supposed to be 6, but the 7th tick was a result of a tick bug, and it didn't last for 3 seconds, but 3.05 seconds. So with 7 ticks, each healing 88 HP, it was able to heal a whopping 616 HP in total. Wow. Almost the same HP as a Musketeer, which we will talk about soon. The spells did not stack, so mirroring it would be useless. It would only heal troops, so no buildings or princess towers. So that brings us to the question, how did players use this new card and what strategies did they come up with? Well, let's talk about that. But uh, first, why don't you scroll down a couple pixels and click that like and subscribe button. If this is your first time watching my videos, hey, I'm Arcto. I'm your go-to Clash Royale historian, and it takes a lot of time and effort researching, writing, editing, and recording all of these things together, so we would genuinely appreciate it if you subscribe. It is free, after all. You can also join my Discord server from the description, and if you want to, you can join my YouTube membership to get some cool perks. So, thank you. <coughs> Think of it this way, healing is the opposite of damaging. At that time, some of the most effective damage dealing spells were poison and fireball. The heal spell could easily restore the health of a card that had been affected by either of these spells. One card that greatly benefited from this synergy was the Musketeer, and why settle for one when you could have three? Because Fireball couldn't eliminate the Musketeer in a single hit, it made the heal spell particularly valuable. The 616 HP heal was more than sufficient to fully restore the health of a nearly dead Musketeer. Soon three Musketeer heal decks became extremely popular, dominating the meta and rising to become the top deck in Clash Royale. The Battle Ram also synergized well with Heal and Three Musketeers, making it easier to achieve through crown victories. And on top of all of that, you had the Elixir Pump to give you that good old Elixir advantage. Without the Heal spell, many interactions and victories would have been impossible. So to remind you once again, the Heal spell healed for 616 HP total, with the 7th bugged tick. A single Musketeer's health on tournament level was 598 HP. HP, and Fireball dealt 527 damage. The heal spell could heal the Musketeer to full HP, and with it, it was basically like Fireball was never used. That's why it worked really well with the Musketeers. Even inside a poison spell, you could just plop a heal down and it would save them from dying, because the heal tick speed was faster than poisons. The heal spell could also be used with the Goblin Barrel, provided you were sure your opponent didn't have log. Otherwise, you'd risk wasting your elixir for nothing. The versatility of the heal spell led to the rise of many popular decks. For example, the Royal Giant Three Musketeer heal deck was quite powerful as well. Pekka also benefited from the heal spell, but one particularly deadly combination was the Minion Horde heal deck, which could create Minion Madness. If you managed to bait out your opponent's spells and kept your Minion Horde alive, that tower was as good as gone. In 2017, the top decks typically included either the Minion Horde or the Battle Ram with Three Musketeers. And as you might expect, the heal spell was considered overpowered. On June 16th, it was even given the ability to stack. And while it only had a 2% usage rate in May, Three Musketeer decks had a 41% usage rate. By July, the heal spell's usage rate had climbed to 23%. Although the heal spell was perceived as broken, it was actually quite weak on its own compared to other spells. It was only strong in combination with the Three Musketeers. This is evident from the usage rates as well. Supercell faced a pretty tough decision. If they nerfed the heal spell, they could have effectively diminished its impact with a small adjustment. They were reluctant to nerf the three musketeers, as that would also negatively affect the single musketeer, which was already fairly weak with around 3% usage rate. Supercell's typical strategy in such situations was to either buff the counters or nerf the card that synergized well with the overpowered card. 
Ultimately, Supercell decided not to nerf the Three Musketeers. On August 11th, 2017, they nerfed the battle ram by increasing its charge time and also reduced the heal spell's duration from 3.05 seconds to 2.5. This adjustment also corrected inconsistencies where the heal spell would pulse seven times. It was changed to pulse only five times, and as a result, the heal spell was no longer as effective with the Three Musketeers. And just a few weeks later, by September, its usage rate had plummeted to 0%, effectively rendering the card useless. While the Three Musketeers continued to be viable, the heal spell faded into obscurity, as it no longer really had a place in the meta. And not just the Three Musketeers meta, it didn't have a single place in any meta, because it only worked with the Three Musketeers. And it stayed like that for years. In 2018, it stayed at a 0% usage rate for the whole year, with no changes. They did change some trivial stuff, for example, giving you the ability to place the heal spell over rivers and also one tile radius expansion, but that was not enough to do anything for the card. Players, though, were trying to rework the heal spell in hopes of fixing it, but with no real solutions. Some were even predicting that it would get removed from the game entirely. Like nobody uses this card either. It's one of those cards where it was good at one point, but some time passes and nobody really uses this anymore. And we'll get to that too. This card being the most requested in the history of Clash Royale had so much potential that it was very sad seeing it at the bottom of the list every single time for the whole damn year. But it couldn't be buffed because of Three Musketeers. Thankfully, on January 7th of 2019, Supercell reworked our champ. They decreased the heal's cost to one elixir from its initial three, and to balance it out, they also decreased its duration to two seconds from 2.5, and decreased its healing by 63%. While many were happy and also worried about a new heal meta, one thing was certain. Heal was back. After just a few hours after the balance change, it once again found its place inside of our Three Musketeers Battle Ram meta, exactly identical to the decks from 2017. But the hype was short-lived, because at the end of January, it reached a 0% usage rate once again. And it stayed that way for a whole year. Again. It was in the worst state it had ever been in, and it's because of the amount of HP it was able to heal. It was tuned so that it couldn't work well with Three Musketeers anymore, and Seth confirmed the reasoning in an interview. We did just change heal in order to make it better for cycle decks, but part of the reason we can't push it anymore is because of the Three Musketeers. No matter what you did to this card, it would either be good with the Three Musketeers or entirely bad. While it did find a place in a Golem deck and created the 2.4 Golem heal, it really did nothing against the meta. At the end of the year, in November, Supercell announced a new card that was going to enter the arena, and it was going to have the ability to heal as well the Battle Healer. So Battle Healer was basically the reworked version of the Healer from Clash of Clans, which was kind of expected, but not at this time. With this, Supercell made balancing the heal spell even harder, because now it had to compete with another healing card. So let's take a second to talk about the Battle Healer. What's interesting is that the devs have been talking about adding this type of card for a long time now, a kind of Paladin card that would obviously also heal, and after many thoughts, the Battle Healer was made. And she was by no means a weak card. As you can see, while she's in combat, she's actively healing herself and friendly troops around her. Each swing made four pulses that healed in total 84 HP, and her hit speed was one second, so it was 84 HP per second. The heal spell healed 65 HP per second. If she takes damage while she isn't in combat, she also passively heals herself. The battle healer was dominating many decks inside the game, and was part of many meta decks. One great example is the Golem battle healer. She basically took the role of the Night Witch, and with heals, she became popular. Sometimes the Night Witch was included, making this deck even more fierce. This golem deck was even used by the number one players. She wasn't considered broken though, she maintained a steady usage rate. In February, she had a 9% usage rate, which is pretty balanced for a card. The battle healer quickly proved to be superior to the heal spell, and after her release, the heal spell usage rate and win rate plummeted to their lowest points ever. At this point, the heal spell was primarily used just in minion horde decks, which were pretty meh. However, Supercell did not abandon the heal spell and promised significant changes in the future. And these changes were something no one was ever expecting. Listen to Clash YouTuber KFC's interview with Drew from February, and you'll understand what Supercell's been up to. 
What is the team's stance on like removing or deleting cards from the game? Because I know on Reddit, um, they always talk about problematic cards such as heal um, becoming so hard to balance and therefore leading to an unhealthy meta. And by the way, heal is a kind of an interesting example because you guys did say you were never going to add a card like heal and then boom, heal, healer. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so well, what is your stance on that? Uh, we are changing heal. We're going to actually change heal into a new card. Um, which is the first time we've ever done something like that in Clash Royale. This is some KFC exclusive content here, oh, you guys. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, basically we'll be removing heal and replacing it with another card that is similar to heal in some ways, but not not like uh, not removing it, just replacing it. And you'll keep all copies of that heal will be transferred into this new card. So, yeah, that's like a, a really cool, exciting, scary thing that we want to introduce. That's huge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Supercell decided to delete the heal spell and replace it with a new card, something they had never done before and likely hadn't considered doing. The decision to remove the heal spell entirely was indeed a significant one, but replacing it was a way to offer something new instead of removing it entirely. When I first heard about the heal spell's removal, I felt genuinely sad. Personally, I had a strong attachment to the heal spell. Even though it wasn't as powerful as it had been back in 2017, it still had memories of the great times I dominated with Three Musketeers and the heal spell. And on March 31st, 2020, Supercell tweeted a picture of a broken heal spell with a title F for paying respects. Heal was no more. But if you look very closely on the right shard, you'll see little eyes reflecting off of it with a big smile. Could that possibly be the new card they were teasing to replace the heal spell with? Well, yeah, exactly. And as suspected, they turned it into another spirit, the heal spirit. Everything was confirmed on TV Royale on the next day on April 1st, which unfortunately was no April Fool's joke. You're going to do something we have never done before. We are removing Heal Spell from the game. Now, this is some really big news, but don't worry, we will be replacing it with a brand new card. Heal Spirit. On April 2nd, the Heal Spell was officially replaced with the Heal Spirit across all platforms. All of the upgrades players had on the Heal Spell were automatically transferred onto the Heal Spirit. The Heal Spirit's description now featured a new line, RIP Heal 2017 to 2020. Alas, we hardly used ya. This was a nod to the heal spell's extremely low usage rate in both casual and competitive play. So, rest in peace heal. You healed our hearts every time. So, how different was the heal spirit from the heal spell? Well, quite different, actually. The heal spirit functions like every other spirit in the game. Its stats are almost identical to those of the ice spirit. Same splash radius and same damage per hit of 91. The only difference was that the heal spirit had one more HP than the ice spirit. This discrepancy was merely a scaling bug, as the ice spirit is a common card and the heal spirit is a rare card. And while the bug has been fixed, it didn't significantly impact gameplay or interactions whatsoever. They also increased the the total healing amount by 181%, bringing it back from 130 to 366 HP, which was more than twice as fast than the old heal spell's 176 HP per second. The tick remained unchanged on 4, only difference being the interval changing from 0.5 seconds to 0.25, which was the same the battle healer had. As for strategy, the heal spirit is best played behind the troop the player wants to heal to guarantee that the troop is inside of the healing radius after the heal spirit attacks. Even if the troop is already damaged, placing the heal spirit in front of any troop that doesn't move at a fast speed will likely cause the troop to be out of the heal spirit's heal radius when it attacks, wasting most of its value. Unlike the heal spell, which worked in one deck archetype, the heal spell worked in many, many of them. Some of the notable ones were Battle Healer Heal Spirit, yeah, two heals and one, Minor Heal Cycle, Royal Hog's Heal, which was and still is a beast of a deck, Fast Hog Heal Cycle, and Elixir Golem Battle Healer Heal, and many, many more. Also, Heal Spirit decks were able to bring the Barbarian Hut into the meta. Like, damn, who would have ever thought that card would see the light of day again? General strategy behind these decks was to protect your Princess Towers in single Elixir time, and the Barbarian Hut was great for that. 
Sometimes. After the double elixir time started though, that's when you counter pushed and took the Ws. Let's first take a look at Battle Healer Heal Spirit, which is a golem deck. This deck was pretty OP if you weren't careful enough, because one mistake would have cost you the entire game. The new Skeleton Dragons made the deck ever more so popular and powerful. And now we'll take a look at the best Heal Spirit deck that was ever made. The Royal Hogs Heal, which if you remember from our Royal Hogs video, was pretty badass. To put it bluntly, the heal spell rework was a massive success, which made heal absolutely more viable and versatile than it was in the past as a spell. Within almost a week after its release, it was at a big 11% usage rate, climbing up to 16% by the end of June, 20% in July, and finally peaking at 36% at the end of August. As you can see, it's becoming more and more popular and viable by everyone in competitive play, especially with the beast decks that were being made. The heal spirit began a appearing in various decks such as Lumber Loon, Ram Rider, Clone, Royal Giant, and of course, Three Musketeers just like the good old days. But to prevent it from becoming too overpowered, Supercell introduced a slight nerf, reducing the healing radius from 4 tiles to 3.5. This adjustment was relatively minor and didn't significantly impact its usage rate, which remained around 26 to 31 percent. On October 6th, Supercell further decreased the Heal Spirit's healing effect by 9 percent, reducing it from 366 HP to 332 HP per second. While this nerf did cause a slight dip in its its usage rate, it rebounded to 26% after October. The Heal Spirit continued to enjoy success and high usage rates, often overshadowing the Ice Spirit and making it less popular. This was partly because the Heal Spirit could also deal damage to Swarm cards. In December, Supercell implemented a major nerf, reducing the Heal Spirit's damage by 69%. Nice. From 91 damage down to 28. This substantial nerf dropped its usage rate to just 2% by the end of December. The damage was so low that it couldn't even one-shot a single skeleton, significantly altering interactions and relegating the heal spirit to the bottom of the usage list, akin to its predecessor, the heal spell. The heal spirit remained at a low usage rate for several months before being reworked. Its damage was restored to 91, which caused its usage rate to rise again to 15%. However, as compensation, the healing radius was decreased to 2.5 tiles from 3. This rework was a key factor in the Heal Spirit's resurgence. If you remember in 2021, Elite Barbarians were buffed and they were dominating the meta with 1.9 Cycle and Rage decks, and the Heal Spirit fit perfectly in with those decks, overpowering the Elite Barbarians even more. But after the Elite Barbarians got nerfed back down, the Heal Spirit followed down as well, and by the end of June, its usage rate was just 3%, which remain that way for almost the rest of this year. And that's essentially what happened in 2021. Champions were introduced, and the extra healing from the Heal Spirit proved beneficial. However, there was a minor glitch with the Heal Spirit. If you timed your clone spell perfectly right after the Heal Spirit landed, your cloned troops would also be healed. This could allow them to survive multiple small hits from various troops, including Zap. However, this glitch was soon patched. It wasn't a major issue, but it was an interesting quirk while it lasted. Did, did that Ice Golem survive a zap? I think it did. I think that's a tanky Ice Golem. Yup, it survived the Princess Tower too. This is great. For the remainder of 2022 and into 2023, the Heal Spirit maintained a solid usage rate of 7 to 12%, with a win rate exceeding 50%. After numerous adjustments and a replacement, the Heal Spirit finally found a balanced state. And in 2024, as of making this video, it sits at a 2% usage rate with a 58% win rate. Maybe it's balanced for some, but in my opinion, it's definitely the weakest spirit and deserves some more love. I'd love to see Supercell give it a larger healing radius because honestly we could even call a heal in such a tiny area a bigger radius could make it much more viable in today's meta and a real option for some top players but now on to the most important question was the heal spell really that bad in clash royale Opinions on the heal spell vary widely, but personally, I believe the heal spell was quite impressive. From its initial concept to its in-game design, I honestly believe it was a well-executed card. While it was most effective in a single deck, that being the Three Musketeers deck, it still had its moments of usefulness before all the nerfs. 
It was sad to see the heal spell deleted, but the replacement was a huge success that made the heal ability work in Clash Royale, which was, as we said, the most requested since the game's first launch. Also, if you've been paying attention inside the game's shop, you might have noticed a very cool easter egg on the trader's shelf, where we can see a yellow glass as the heal spell and the musketeer's helmet, to signify the combo which was the legendary three musketeers heal. Well done, Supercell. Honestly. Well done. If there's one thing they do best, it's little easter eggs like this. Oh, also, when the monk was released, it deflected the heal spirit with its ability, which he couldn't do on other spirits. Pretty interesting. While the heal spirit is now balanced, the community is always buzzing with new ideas. So let's explore some intriguing future concepts for heal. One interesting rework idea is making the heal spell cost zero elixir, but also heal your enemies. This would certainly make it a more dangerous and strategic card to use. As for evolving the heal spirit, well, imagine an upgraded version of the original heal spell with the same damage and healing effects as the current heal spirit, but with the flexibility to be targeted anywhere. That would add an exciting new dynamic to the game. Another concept is to create a heal card that is immune to all negative effects, like freeze, stun, or knockback, while reflecting damage back to opponents. Although this idea sounds Sounds powerful, it might not fit the healing theme quite perfectly. What if we took a different approach and evolved another card, like the Lumberjack, since he already carries the Rage spell, and why not give him the Heal spell as well? After his defeat, both spells would drop, making his push even more formidable. Admittedly, you know, that would probably be pretty broken. Alternatively, how about a unicorn that spawns a heal spirit every three seconds? Or consider this, a heal wizard. Just as we have the ice wizard with the ice spirit and the electro wizard with the electro spirit, why not introduce a heal wizard to complete the wizard quartet? If that doesn't happen, uh, at least the heal spirit will remain a boy of the battle healer. That should have been me, not him! <sighs> Anyway, these ideas might seem far-fetched, but they showcase the endless creativity and enthusiasm of the Clash Royale community. Now, if you think the heal spell has a wild history, just wait until you hear about the day Royal Recruits broke Clash Royale. They were hands down the most overpowered common card ever introduced, and their story is just as crazy. So go check it out, and I'll see you there.